So right here you can see us working on the job case. This is where the letters are housed. You can see right above the little cheat sheet that tells you where the type is. It's really crucial to familiarize yourself with the position of the type to make loading the composing stick more efficient. Here you can see us collecting spacers before we start to load our composing stick. Spacers are what actually creates the space on the ballot itself in between the words. It's crucial that we have the same size spacer so that all the space on the ballot itself is uniform. And now we're actually ready to set type. As you set type, it's important to hold the composing stick in the manner shown. It looks and feels pretty awkward, but it's the position that allows you to use your thumb to keep the type in place as you load the stick. The type is placed upside down on the stick, left to right. For the blank spaces in between the words, we use those spacers that we collected previously. Here we can see the notches on each of the types that help us make sure that we're placing them correctly into the composing stick. There's one here placed incorrectly that will need to be fixed. One of the key elements of typesetting for loading the composing stick and onwards is keeping things as tight as possible. Here we can see tiny spacers used in between the type to tighten things up. As each of our typesetting teams finished up their separate composing sticks, we placed each of our sticks onto a separate metal bed in order to prepare it for loading onto the press. Our ballot is beginning to take shape. Note here the use of wooden furniture in order to help both keep the type set in place and also make the space for the gaps on the ballot. This wooden furniture will also be used in the lockup process, which is next. We initially planned to print our ballot on the Common Press, otherwise known as the Franklin Press, named as such because of Benjamin Franklin's use of a similar model during his time as a printer. As we came to find out though, using an older model of press presented unique problems. Now ready for the lockup process, which is when we move the ballot onto the printing bed and begin to tighten it up for the beginning of printing. Again, as with the composing stick, the key is to keep things as tight as possible. Here's another angle that shows the inclusion of two of our wood cuts, as well as an array of wooden furniture that we will use to help with our lockup process. And here's another view with even more of our ballot loaded onto the printing bed. 
All that we need now is our final two wood cuts. The lockup is one of the most important steps of the entire printing process. See here how the use of metal keys create even more pressure onto the ballot, keeping everything in place so that during the actual process of printing, none of the type will move. Here you can see it's tamping the locked up ballot. Tamping ensures that none of the typefaces will be sticking up, which could create an uneven printing job. One final step before preparing the ink is brushing off any loose pieces of debris which could affect the printing process. We can now begin to prepare the ink that we will use to print our ballot. The ink is spread out on a hard, smooth surface. For our ballad, we're using a more contemporary brand of ink. Some ink of the period was oil-based, composed partially of lamp black, or suit gathered from a kerosene lamp after it was finished burning. After carefully inking our roller, we can now ink the type. Note how the roller is used vertically, horizontally, and diagonally, ensuring that all of the typefaces and woodcuts are given an equal distribution of ink. While we've opted to use the more modern roller, Printers of the period would have used these leather-covered inking balls, which were typically filled with wool. Here's a brief look at what it may have looked like to use these inking balls on our ballot. After loading our paper onto the type, we can now operate the Franklin Press. It's important to not pull the lever too hard. This could result in too much pressure, which could then break the type. After both sides of the ballot have been pressed, we can roll the bed back out and see how our ballot printed. After encountering some problems with the Franklin press, we opted to use the Seki press, a slightly more modern printing press that was a little easier for us to operate. Here you can see us printing our test copy, which we'll then use for helping with our editing process. Editing is an extremely significant, albeit tedious, step in the printing process. Some of the mistakes that we were looking for included misspellings, upside down letters, are broken types. After finding our mistakes, 
we can go about correcting them. To do this, we use a pair of long nose tweezers to pull out the incorrect typeface and put in the correct one. This must be done extremely carefully though, so as to avoid breaking or scratching up the type. Before we begin our final printing process, we dampen our paper so that the ink can transfer more easily onto it. And here are some clips of us using the Segi Press to create the final versions of our ballad. Here are our finished ballads, looking good.